Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our very last conservation in the classroom event of the school year. My name is Kate and I will be your host. As some of you may know, tomorrow is Endangered Species Day. So for our event today, we wanted to learn about one of the world's most iconic endangered species. Of course, I'm talking about the tiger. Here with us is Dr. Shearing Tempa, Program Director of the Bhutan Tiger Center. Dr. Tempa is going to share about some of the tools and practices he uses when studying tigers in the wild and why Bhutan is such a special place for these important big cats. Dr. Tempa, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank Coming you. to us all the way from Bhutan. So before we get started with Dr. Tempa, of course, we need to meet our special guests that we have invited to join us on camera today. So first up coming to us from Canton, Ohio is our second graders from Arts Academy. Academy. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Next coming to us from Ontario, Canada, we have Gabrielle and Ariel. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Next, from Easley, South Carolina, we have our fifth graders from Crosswell Elementary. Hey. Hey. And last but not least, coming to us from Worcester, Ohio, we have our fourth grade class from St. Mary's School. Hey. So nice to see all of you. We cannot wait to hear your tiger questions at the end of Dr. Tempest's presentation. Just a quick reminder to all of you watching from the web page, go ahead and use that Google form that you see underneath the video stream to place any questions that you have, and we will do our best to get as many of them answered at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, Dr. Tempa, if you are ready, you can go ahead and put your slides into presentation mode, and we will get them pulled up on the screen here, and you can take it from here. Okay. Am I ready to, to go? Yep, we can see them. You're ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> good, uh, very good evening uh, from the Kingdom of Bhutan. My name is Sring Tempa. Uh, I am a tiger biologist uh, working for the government of Bhutan uh, under the Ministry of Forest and Agriculture Services. Uh, and uh, as Katie said, I work for the Bhutan Tiger Center, and this is a beautiful picture of tigers from Bhutan. I wanted to show where Bhutan is. Um, Bhutan is a very small country, a landlocked country between India and China. So we are in the Eastern Himalayas. Bhutan is also known as the country of cross-national happiness. A lot of mountains, a lot of prayer flags, a lot of monks. We also have a huge uh, buildings called Zongs, our fort. Uh, so Bhutan is famously known for these things. And uh, we also strongly believe in the gross national happiness, the happiness for all the big. Within this, uh, 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 Bhutan, although it's a small country, but we have 60% more than 70% uh, of our country under forest cover. Inside this forest covers, we have uh, a beautiful flowers, a beautiful biodiversity, and a large and iconic species like tigers. Uh, this is the national dish uh, that uh, Bhutanese people wear. Uh, uh, you can see me and my friend here, me and my friend here wearing our national dish in front of oh, Zong. And then on, on the left side, uh, our ladies, uh, the dress that they wear is called Kira. This is how our uh, uh, women in Bhutan dress up. And then this is uh, how our Bhutanese men dress up. Uh, the capital of Bhutan is called Thimphu. This is where I am now uh, giving it uh, um, um, this talk from one of the, my friend's office here in Thimphu. And uh, this is where the Bhutan Tiger Center is, the place where I work. Uh, it's about two days uh, dive from the Thimphu capital city to the southern part of Bhutan. And this is how my office looked like. It's a very new office. Uh, we do a lot of tiger work uh, from that area 
and we try to save tigers. Uh, if you wanted to ask me like why we focus so much on tigers, the reason is that uh, the tigers have lost more than 93% of their historical range uh, over the last 100 or so years. Uh, today, uh, there are less than 4,000 tigers in the wild. So, so there are not many tigers in the wild. So there, uh, we have only a few tigers left. And if we do not protect them uh, and, and conserve them, then they will go extinct. Uh, today, only 11 countries have tigers. Uh, in like 100 years ago, almost all of Asian countries had tigers, but now they are all gone. And if you see in this map, uh, they used to be in this whole yellow part, but now where you see is only in this red part. component. And this is where Bhutan is. Bhutan is a small country, but it's a very important tiger habitat. Here in Bhutan, we have a tigers all the way from south about uh, 100 meters from sea level to 4,400 meters uh, in our mountains. So we got the highest elevation range of tigers from Bhutan. Uh, the species that uh, is found in Bhutan is the Royal Bengal Tiger. Uh, not only that they are there in our forest, but tigers also play a very important role in our Bhutanese culture. Uh, if you go and, and uh, visit uh, Bhutan, I mean, if you come and visit Bhutan and go around and see Bhutanese buildings uh, and then some prayer flags, you will see everywhere that we have a painting of tigers, snow lions, Garuda, and uh, uh, dragon. So tiger is one of the four power animal uh, that in our culture, we consider it very significant. Uh, and uh, rest of this of these four animal rest three are all mythical now they have they are no longer here so only the tiger is here you know so that's why like it's a very important for a botanist uh, to conserve tiger so how do we study tigers how do my friends and, and i go to forest and I look for tigers so we use a remote camera traps so we have a remote camera trap uh, that uh, whenever a tiger comes in front of our camera, it takes a picture because we cannot use other methods because tiger is a huge animal. They are also a dangerous animal. Right? So if you try to handle like any other wildlife like uh, or any other animal, then it will harm us. Also, uh, it's not very safe for animals too to directly uh, catch them and then try to I study them. So what we do is we use remote cameras. So what our camera does is that we set the camera, we put batteries in front of this camera tra in this camera and switch it on. So it's a passive. So whenever there is a movement in front of our camera, you see a sensor here. So this is the sensor. You uh, uh, it's in passive infrared sensor. Whenever a tiger or any other animal move in front of our camera tap then they will take pictures of those animals. So how do we do this? So first, what we do is we draw a map, uh, like where you want to go in, in, a, in a forest and to see where there are tigers. So first, what we do is we draw a map uh, on, in, in our offices. So once we draw those, uh, have those maps, then it's a Bhutanese culture. It is our traditional belief that before we go to forest, then we do the local appeasement of the local deities. Many Bhutanese people think that our mountains, our forest, our tigers are sacred animals. They are sacred animals. So we try to appease the local deities, do religious ceremonies, bringing in monks. And whenever we reach, so when we are about to start, when we reach in the forest, then what we do is then we again you know, make a lot of smoke just to make, uh, I mean, just to appease the, the local deities and the local guardians in the forest so that no harm uh, is done to our team uh, who is going to the forest 
for many days setting up camera traps. So this is how we go. So we, 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 we pack our things, we pack our camera traps, we pack our sleeping bags, we get helps from the villagers sometimes. Sometimes, you know, we get my own colleagues uh, to, to go to the forest uh, looking for the uh, locations to set up camera traps. So if you see here, you see that there is a yellow small thing hanging from my neck. This is called GPS. It's a global positioning systems where it help us to take to the forest to set up where, where we wanted to set a camera. So we get those points in our GPS, then we walk in the forest. Sometimes, you know, that we, we have to cross a huge river. Uh, you can see one of my friends, he's, he's supposed to be helping us, but then my friend is, you know, carrying him instead of helping him. So in, in the forest, a lot of uh, water crossing, a lot of climbing, a lot of walking to look for tigers. Sometimes uh, you, uh, our uh, path to our camera stations are dangerous area. They are blocked. So we have to clear it with our machetes. And then on our way, while we are going to our camera point, what we do is then we look for tiger signs. For example, we look for tiger scratch, uh, if there are a tiger or not. We also look for hair samples along those uh, uh, along, along this scratch mark, if they had left some hair samples, we also collect those for DNA sampling. Uh, we look for, so wherever they are, we take good pictures of their pock marks. Uh, we also collect their scat, their tiger poop, uh, to uh, do DNA analysis and also see like what tiger has eaten. Once we reach to our camera stations, we identify locations, then we set the cameras uh, and, and then we pretend that we are like tigers trying to walk in front of our camera traps, trying to see whether uh, we are captured correctly or not. Then we, uh, once uh, everything is positioned, then we set the camera traps, switch it on. We sometimes camouflage, first check whether the batteries, everything are on or not. Then we camouflage and then we leave, leave them there. And after two or three months, after two or three weeks, what we do is we go back to those camera stations. We change our memory card. Uh, every uh, camera stations, uh, we record uh, the battery uh, percentage, uh, put the new batteries if they are uh, exhausted, uh, change the SD card, and then we come back to the camps. And many times we hide our camera stations, camouflage with the camera stations with the elephant dung. Because if you do not protect cameras uh, with the elephant dung, then the elephant, we have a lot of elephants in, in our cameras uh, area or, or my tiger research area. So what I end up doing is that these elephants will be destroying all the cameras. And these are a very expensive cameras, almost $500 camera and I have a thousand uh, camera trap now doing the whole Bhutan Tiger survey. Uh, if you do not protect like that, then these elephants will uh, break the cameras. Uh, we found out that uh, elephants do not like their own dung uh, because uh, uh, they hit uh, their own dung. So in the process, they do not disturb our camera. So uh, we, we save our cameras from elephant like that. Uh, so sometimes this is how we sleep in, in the forest. We, we do not, uh, many times we go in a very thick forest. Uh, we sometimes eat in this kind of place, sometimes sleep uh, in this kind of hut. Sometimes we even don't make uh, a proper uh, cover. We just sleep by a riverside. You know? Then we get a lot of tigers. See, you can see the tigers. Uh, that the, we, 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 when we go and check camera traps, we see a lot of tigers. So lot, you can see. So, uh, so tigers from our camera trap, this is how we get uh, tigers.
So this is how my camera, our camera traps. Once we bring them to back to our office, we have to identify the tigers. So one fun fact about tigers is, is that each tiger has a unique uh, pattern. Their coat is very different. The pattern on their coat is very different. So we try to identify each individual tiger based on the type of strap pattern that they have. So these are two different uh, tiger individuals. So like we humans, we have a very unique um, thumbprint. Uh, our fingerprintings are very unique for each one of us. So like that, tiger have a very unique uh, pelage pattern. You know, their stripe pattern is very unique. So no uh, tiger will have the same uh, stripe patterns on their body. So that's how we try to uh, identify the individual tigers. So, for example, what the, these two are very different tigers. You can see that their pelage patterns are different. But if you look here, uh, this, what about these uh, two pictures? They, they are actually the same tiger. Right? So you can see that everything is the same. Right? So this is how we identify tigers. This is how we identify individual tigers. And then we get the number, like how many are there. I also just, uh, because I do a lot of camera traps, it's not only the camera tigers that we get from our camera stations. We also get a lot of other images from uh, these camera stations. So I wanted to take you to a visual tour of Bhutan to one of our camera stations. Okay, ready? So these camera stations was set up at, uh, at uh, 3,000, I'm out. At 2,300 meters from a uh, from a sea level at uh, that altitude in a bamboo forest in Bhutan. So in this one camera station, see how many species are there. So this is a summer deer, uh, like the elk deer in in, in the United States. We have a common leopard in the same camera station. We have <clears throat> we have this uh, a munjak or a barking deer. We have a seal. We have a goral, it's a mountain goat. We have Himalayan black bear, <clears throat> pigs, then tiger. You can see from one camera image, of the one camera stations, how many species are there. Then we have a golden cat. We have a marble cat. Uh, we have a tiger again, and a lot of wild pigs. And now we, what, what we also do is, Sometimes we also catch them whenever there are, you know, problem tigers that come to the villages when they kill livestock, take their cattle. So we go there, we uh, catch them, we put a collar on them, and then, then we try to monitor them, like where they are going, yeah, and then uh, what uh, we can do to uh, prevent them from coming to villages <coughs> and killing. Uh, cows and horses in the villages. <laughs> so this is the story of Bhutan. You know? So you can see this uh, image and uh, <clears throat> I will uh, take uh, the questions with this. Now I'm done with my talk. Thank you so much, Dr. Tembo. That was so cool watching that footage. Um, if you're ready, we're gonna get started with the Q&A part of the program. So for all of our special guests on camera, make sure you have your questions ready when it's your turn. And just a quick reminder to everybody watching online, place your questions in that form so we can get those answered as well. So I think we're gonna start with our Arts Academy in Canton, Ohio. If you're ready, let's bring you in and have your first question. Put your head out of your face and come up here and ask. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a question. Hi. Hi. I have a question. How do tigers get their stripes, and do they have to reach a certain age to get them? 
So try, try. Okay. So tiger, uh, the uh, so as soon as tigers are born, they are born with their stripes. So no matter how old they are or how young they are, the stripe pattern do not change. So they are born with that. So it's a genetic thing. Uh, so as soon as they are born, so they have this uh, uh, stripe patterns, and it doesn't change. Uh, even if they get very old or something, so so it's from the birth, so the, it doesn't change. What a great question to start off. Let's bring in Gabrielle and Ariel. You're up next. Hello. Hi. How do, how do you become a scientist that works with tigers? <clears throat> Okay, thank you. So when I was young, I uh, I used to look after our uh, family cows, you know? and then many times uh, we will lose uh, our uh, cows to predators like tiger, leopard, uh, and then I used to get very, very angry with, with the animal when I was young because they would come and kill my uh, livestock. But then the, um, as I grow older, I went to school in India to study uh, wildlife, I study, to study uh, forestry. And then there I took one course on wildlife management. And then I found out that tiger is a species that is threatened and endangered and if we do not care about tigers uh, tigers will go extinct so that's how i decided that maybe if there is one species that you know i can help maybe i can help tigers so that's how i came back to my country started working for the forest then when i had an opportunity to go for my masters and then my phd i chose tigers to study and then this is how I went to University of Montana to learn uh, uh, about more about tigers. So this is how I started working on tigers. So this is my 15th year of working in tigers. That's another great question. I'm sure they're they're thinking through how they can have your job one day, Dr. Dama. <laughs> okay, let's go to our group at Crosswell Elementary in South Carolina. What is your first question? Um, did we reach the goal to double the number of wild tigers by 2022? Goal T times two. Hey, can you repeat your question? I, I couldn't do it. So the She's goal of? <laughs> you wanted you to repeat the question. Okay. Did we reach the goal to double the numbers to wild tigers by 2022? Go t times two. So, uh, so you you are asking whether we can reach that or not? Yes. Okay. So uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so tigers are only found uh, in in 2010 when we had a huge uh, tiger summit where all the leaders from the the tiger range countries came and then the, the conservation agencies like WLF uh, uh, came together and they decided that they wanted to double the tiger number if we have to uh, protect it uh, i mean if we wanted to prevent it from going further down so uh, many countries have done that uh, for example india nepal i think even to a certain extent the bhutan has been able to do this but exactly doubling a tiger number, we may not be able to do this. But I think there are a lot of promises. Uh, we just now, we cannot see for sure from Bhutan because we had uh, conducted our survey uh, in 2015. And now we are doing it again. So we it cannot say that whether we have doubled the tiger number or not. But T times two for Bhutan was to estimate the number of tigers in Bhutan 
and to maintain it as a viable target populations here in the country. But other countries have done it, some, some countries. Okay, let's go to our group in Worcester, Ohio, St. Mary's School. You are up next. Have you ever accidentally come across a tiger while checking cameras? Very good. Uh, thank you. I had to see, so to see a tiger in the wild is very, very difficult, especially in Bhutan, where the forest is very thick and the visibility is very low. So many times we do not see tigers. Uh, during my more than 12 years of actively working with tigers, I came across twice. Uh, one was early in the morning, like it, it's a summer here, summer can be very hot. And I was working with uh, a group of my friends. And suddenly we saw a tiger in, in one of the pool, uh, water pond that it was cooling off. Uh, and another time I saw a tiger uh, that was in one of the, the I mean, it, it was uh, at the water hole, near a water hole waiting for the prey to come. So I just saw two, two times. Very cool. We're gonna ask a couple questions that came in online and then we'll do another round with our groups on camera here. So we got an interesting question from Hufford Junior High School in Illinois. They wanted to know if you ever share your camera trap data with other conservation groups like ones that are studying leopards, for instance. Yes, uh, we, 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 we do share that uh, images uh, with, with other uh, colleagues. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the 2014-15 National Tiger Survey data, uh, we have shared with them, uh, uh, many, many, many uh, colleagues. And this is also this time we are doing another round of a whole Bhutan Tiger Survey, so we will be sharing all the images within uh, our, our department and other colleagues. Uh, more than that, I have a data for more than 10 years of continuous camera training data. So whenever we have our collaborators, our partners, our donors, like we do share, share information with them. Okay, it looks like there was another question here that was submitted by a couple groups, Brianna at Dodge Elementary, Nebraska, and Miss Pickles class at St. Mary's School. They were curious to know how many different types of tigers are there? Uh, so in, 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 in Bhutan, we have only uh, the Royal Bengal tiger uh, here, but uh, we, we, we have uh, Siberian tigers in, in Russia. Uh, and in the Russian Far East, we have Sumatran tigers in uh, the uh, tropical uh, uh, Indonesia. Uh, we have uh, Indochinese tiger uh, uh, in the or, or South China tiger in in the South in South China. So around like four to five is sub. So species is only one, but sub species there are five. Or sometimes they see it is a six, like uh, this um, uh, panthera, panthera tigris jacksoni, they, they consider it a subspecies. So if you consider that, there are six subspecies. Okay, if we are ready, let's head back to our groups on camera. So we'll start back up with our academy, bring them in for their question. question. Um, my name is Willem, and um, can tigers hear small things from far away? Yes, they will. I think uh, because uh, tigers, uh, uh, so tigers, they, they are a top predator, right? So they, they always have to hunt uh, and look for their prey, many a times which are much faster than them, right? So they have to be very sensitive. So they will hear like even a slightest movement. Uh, uh, and then they, they, they have a very strong sense of smell uh, and they are very, they can hear it uh, very well. So, so they need to hear it uh, as 
to, to catch uh, their prey? That was a great question. Let's go to Gabrielle and Ariel. What's your next question? Hello. Um, how long do tigers live? Okay, so so it it, it depends uh, where where they are, right? Uh, in 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 Bhutan, in a place like Bhutan, I think the where the poaching and these things are not very severe. They, I think, they, they live a, a long life. But on average, you can see uh, in in zoos and other areas where they are uh, always getting a regular food, everything. There's not a lot of danger. They can live as much as twenty, uh, more than twenty years. But many times in in the wild, uh, it is difficult. Many people try to hunt them. Uh, many people will, you know, or, okay, kill them. So on on average, maybe like it, it depends where they are. Like in in Bhutan, uh, we have seen a tiger that has lived almost uh, fourteen, fifteen years. Okay. Next up is Crosswell Elementary. Is there any way that we can bring back any types of breed of tigers that are extinct? Uh, I genetically, the, 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 we, we can, uh, I mean, do a genetic, I mean, genetic modification and these things you may be able to do that. But uh, I think now our more, more focus is on conserving and protecting the existing tigers. Because tiger as a species has not gone extinct. So it is the subspecies of tigers uh, that has gone extinct. So what we are focused now and then focusing more is to protect and conserve the, the remaining ones. Okay, last but not least, St. Mary's, you are up next. How do you repopulate the tigers? Uh, the easiest way to do that is to protect the habitat. So if you protect their habitat, so tiger, uh, so, so first you protect the tiger habitat, right? So you create a protected area like park, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, and then uh, you uh, do a lot of monitoring uh, to uh, prevent people from killing tigers. So if you can do these two things, uh, the tigers will repopulate. So tiger is a very, actually a prolific um, breeder. They, they, they will reproduce uh, soon and then they can uh, bounce back. But two things are very critical. One is habitat. So habitat with a lot of uh, prey, a lot of food for, for tigers. And another is do not have people going around in those protected areas and killing tigers. So, so if you get, have these two things, you can do well with tiger conservation. So speaking of habitat, some of you may be wanting to know the answer to the trivia question that we had put up in the beginning. So the trivia question that we had in the beginning was how many acres of forest does one tiger need for its home range? So how many acres of forest would we have to protect in order to protect one tiger? It looks like the majority of the uh, audience answered 10,000. The answer was actually 25,000 acres. So we need 25,000 acres of forest for every one individual tiger, which is a lot of forest that needs to be protected. So let's head back over to our questions that were submitted online. We got a question from Gretel in Sloan, Pennsylvania, that was curious about the stripes of the tigers. Are they also um, a sign of their age or is it just simply a pattern that makes you recognize them? What, what was that? I, I, I missed that. The question was about the tiger stripes. If it's just a pattern or if you're able to kind of tell more about the tiger, like their age or anything like that. So it's mostly, okay, so, so, so from the tiger uh, uh, stripe patterns, we can just see whether it is, uh, 
I mean, we can just identify the individual. We cannot say anything about sex. We cannot say anything about the age. Uh, and only the, the, the short answer is only only the, for identification of individuals. Because uh, to, identify, I mean, to identify individual tiger is very important to see where they are moving, uh, how many are there. So from our camera tabs, uh, we, we get those uh, strap patterns and, and then it's easier for us to see, for example, to calculate the home range for individual tigers. So this kind of information we use. But other than that, uh, the strap pattern doesn't help. But for a tigers, it's, it's very important. Right? Those broken lines, those, those uh, stripes help them to camouflage uh, in, in, in the forest. Okay, another question here from um, the web page. In your opinion, um, let's see, this question was submitted by Aaron in Everett, Massachusetts, and Betsy from Yorktown Central School District. What is the biggest problem that tigers currently face in their environment? So here in Bhutan, uh, we have a good habitat. Uh, we have a good protections, everything here in Bhutan. The only threat is that we have like tigers number are increasing and we are seeing a lot of human tiger conflict. So this is major issue here in Bhutan. But globally, the poaching, you know, tiger, tigers are killed for their skin part that people use it to decorate their buildings or, or to, you know, sometimes as uh, their heirlooms. Uh, and, and then some tiger bones are used in a traditional uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, then the, likewise, their meat are used uh, for, for so many purposes. Uh, I do not, I mean, there is no medical uh, value in, in that, but people, uh, they have continued doing this. So people still think that it helps them, but actually it doesn't help. So the poaching is a major threat. The habitat lost again. The habitat lost. The poaching of their prey. So these are some of the major issues that the tigers today face. Okay, we're going to get started with what will likely be our last round of questions here. So let's bring in our group from Arts Academy for your last question. How long did the babies live with their moms? <clears throat> So, uh, the, very good question. Uh, the baby, so tigers, uh, mm, the, one individual tiger will give sometimes two to three, uh, on average two to three uh, babies or cubs, we call it cubs in, in, in our cats. Uh, and um, it takes about two years, like 24 months, to fully become an independent individual uh, tiger that can go themselves in the forest, hunt themselves, and then sustain themselves. So tigers, are, uh, I mean, they can grow as big as their mom, but still they need to hunt. So hunting is a skill that, that they learn over the two years. So they will be with their mom for two years. Okay, Gabrielle and Ariel, you're up next. Okay. How do the funds we raise help the tigers? So what, what was that? I'm sorry, I missed it. Say it again. How do the funds we raise help the tigers? Oh, so that's very uh, uh, important question. Uh, the fund uh, that that uh, uh, we we raise uh, uh, can help a lot uh, to protect the tigers. Uh, for example, uh, we need a lot of manpower uh, to go and patrol in in the forest to protect from poachers. So we can uh, 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 support uh, those uh, uh, frontline rangers uh, who who are. Uh, protecting the tigers day and night. Uh, likewise, uh, sometimes when there are human wildlife conflict in, in the villages, uh, 
to compensate farmers uh, so that they do not go back and kill the tigers uh, and and also uh, to protect the landscape like to pay salary for uh, the rangers uh, to to uh, help uh, get uh, information uh, like the beautiful tiger pictures that you just saw uh, uh, from these presentations uh, we need money to buy the camera traps so these things how uh, it it can help so, so conservation of tigers uh, will depend on the resources that is the funding that we have okay next up is our group from crosswell elementary your next question my question is what is your favorite thing about tigers that is a very difficult question everything every part of a tiger is a, uh, is my favorite thing but uh, tigers as a species they are a very independent independent species uh, unlike the other large uh, cats uh, tigers are solitary and they are all by themselves uh, and and then the type of prey that they can bring down like almost 10 times of their body weight they can uh, bring down the, 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 their prey so the strength uh, and and the the agility of a tiger is the most uh, favorite thing uh, to me okay and our last group from saint mary's what's your last question here if a tiger ever has cubs do they ever reunite So, tigers uh, are a highly territorial animal. So the mother, the, the mother tiger, uh, will have a, a large uh, home range or, or territory, and then their uh, daughters actually inherit those territories and they divide. And they will make sure that once they they have gone from the tiger, uh, from uh, their natal territory uh, the, even the mother will not accept their daughter coming back to their territory so the the, the 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 male tigers on the other hand they have to go like very very far away from their natal uh, territory so so we have a tiger uh, we captured uh, uh, a male tiger in 2013 in the foothills of the south in, in the southern Bhutan where my office is just now uh, after two years, we found the tigers at 4,400 meters that had gone a very well from a one end to the another end of the country. So the male tiger has to disperse a long distance. But on the other hand, the females, they will not disperse uh, the, from, uh, from their original uh, mother's uh, home range from not a long distance. But once they get separated from their mom, it is very difficult for them to come uh together and then uh, be nice to each other they will fight that was another really great question um we're gonna close things out with just a couple last questions that were submitted online um i know someone already asked about your favorite part of tigers but we had another question here from jocelyn in denver that wanted to know what's your favorite part about your job so <clears throat> Uh, the most beautiful part of my job is that I get to go to forest and and uh, and set this uh, amazing tiger pictures. And uh, uh, over the last ten, uh, more than twelve years, uh, I have uh, been across Bhutan setting up a lot of camera traps. And I'm never tired of of doing doing this. And this is the most exciting thing: is that I set a camera trap, and I'm always excited that. What is there in this camera? So this is what I get uh, to do and then I like the most. Okay, I think this is going to be our last question. It's a great question to close on. We have a question from the 4B class of 2030 in Charleston, South Carolina, that we wanted to know what degrees are the best to earn if you plan to work in the field of conservation? So kind of tacking on to that, Dr. Tempa, what pieces of advice would you want to leave with our students today? Uh, 
I, I mean, any because uh, there are so many tiger biologists who are not biologists, who, who have not studied biology. Uh, some we have some engineers, some physicists, and then some general, I mean, forestry guys, or some well. So there is no specific degree that you are required to work on tigers. Uh, in fact, uh, um, I have a colleague who, who, with whom I'm doing a project now. So he's a lawyer. So so everybody can work for tigers and try to save tigers. But if you wanted to do a real um, uh, tiger uh, genetics or some population ecology thing, then maybe you need to have some uh, background on the, the genetics, uh, biology, and, and statistics. So other than that, there is no uh, one requirement to, to be associated with tigers, uh, to help conserve tigers, to work with tigers. Uh, so there is no one degree. Everybody can help. Everybody can work. Everybody can become a uh, tiger biologist. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time today. I hope everybody had a great time. I know I learned a lot. And just a quick reminder, parents, teachers, guardians, you can find lots more educational material on tigers on the Wild Classroom webpage. And make sure all of you talk with your family and friends tomorrow about the importance of tigers, what you learned today, and about any of your other favorite endangered species for Endangered Species Day. So thank you so much, Dr. Tempa, for being here. And a huge thanks to all of you watching and to our special guests that joined us. So we'll see you all in the next